The Emperor's Children in Warhammer 40k are one of the most well-known Chaos Space Marine legions, and their story stretches back to the very earliest appearance of Chaos in the 40k setting, a legion of noise marines and hedonists who worshipped Slanesh, the god of excess. But their origin story couldn't have been more different, starting out as the most loyal of legions, paragons of martial honour and ambassadors of the Imperium. The story of the Horus Heresy, amongst other things, is the story of their fall. Hi, uh, welcome to Heresy 101. In this little series, I'm going to go through the background for each of the Space Marine legions of the Horus Heresy. I'll take a look at where they are at the start of the Heresy and how they got there, what happens to them during the Heresy, and in this case, how it turned a once loyal legion into the debased group of Chaos Warbands we know from 40k. Anyway, before I start, this video contains spoilers for the Horus Heresy Black Books and also the Black Library novels. Obviously. The treachery of the Horus Heresy took place in the closing years of the Emperor's Great Crusade, as the forces of the Imperium pushed outwards from Terra in an attempt to unify the galaxy, and this constant push outwards served as a cover for Horus and the rest of the traitor legions to plot their rebellion. But by the time the Civil War finally broke out, the slow fall of the Emperor's children had already begun. Their Primarch, once a vision of noble perfection, possessed by a demon, and their bodies being twisted by their apothecaries into more and more distorted caricatures of what they once were, which is ironic, as at the start of the Great Crusade, that sort of physical corruption was exactly what they were trying to avoid. The history of the Third Legion, like all the legions, starts in the latter years of the Unification Wars, as the Emperor slowly conquered Old Earth. While the First Legion, later the Dark Angels, were proving the might of the new Astartes pattern in full-scale conflicts across the planet, the rest of the legions were being slowly brought up to fighting strength, and early examinations of the Third Legion notes their noble bearing, tendency towards martial perfection, and disciplined, ordered minds. The only genetic flaws being a tendency towards albinism and occasionally violet irises. To the new recruits of the Third Legion, this was hardly a surprise. They had been raised from the noble families of old Europa, sending their firstborn sons as penance for their resistance to the Imperium. In fact, they were noted to be refined and glorious right from the start clad in armour covered in golden thunderbolts and rays of sunlight, and their initial deployments, when there were only a few of them, were often as an officer corps for mortal troops, being split up to provide morale-boosting command elements to the rest of the Emperor's armies. It was this heritage, as well as their status as obvious favourites amongst the legions, that led to them becoming known as the Emperor's Children. And as the early Crusades started to move away from Terra, that reputation was cemented. It was their dogged defence of the Emperor, alongside the Custodes on Proxima, that led to them being honoured with the right to wear this, the Palatine Aquila, that's the one with the pointy up wings, on their armour. For many, they were the voice of the Emperor, accompanying diplomatic missions as bodyguards and emissaries and carrying the Imperial Standard. But before the Crusade really got underway, disaster struck. During the genesis of the Astartes project, the Primarchs, the generals and genetic templates of the legions, had been scattered across the galaxy. Without the Primarchs around, the gene seed used to create each space marine was less stable and more prone to failure. Near the end of the unification of Terra, it was discovered that the Third Legion's gene seed reserves had become infected by a viral blight that, despite the best efforts of the Emperor's scientists, infected and destroyed the entire batch. The only gene seed left was that growing in the augmented bodies of the Third Legion warriors, and that wasn't enough to keep pace with the growth the Crusade required. As the rest of the legions built their strength and led expeditionary forces out into the dark, the Emperor's children dwindled. They were saved by a stroke of luck. Early in the Crusade, their Primarch, Fulgrim, was discovered on the grey and rocky industrial world of Chemos. Chemos was slowly sinking into obscurity, but Fulgrim had risen to rule the world as a figure of hope, introducing a renaissance of technological and artistic advances and intellectual refinement. It was this hope he brought to the Third Legion when their 200 remaining Legionnaires first met him. Kneeling, he promised them a new start, telling them of their destiny and to shake off the misfortunes of the past. 
The Third Legion were officially renamed the Emperor's Children and adopted the Imperial Purple and Palatine Aquila as their uniform. In practical terms, the rediscovery of Fulgrim allowed for faster reproduction of gene seed, and the Legion slowly began to grow again. Until it reached fighting strength, though, Fulgrim and the Third were seconded to the Lunar Wolves under the command of Horus, and the two became good friends, each of their legions complementing the other. With this change in fortunes, and as they started to accrue battle honours, the Emperor's children, knowing they had some catching up to do, rebuilt their pride. A passionate intensity filled them. They studied the tactics of the other legions, attempting to excel at the same skills, channeled all their energies into training in specific arts of war until that training consumed them. Eventually they grew large enough to lead their own expeditions, but they were never the most numerous of legions. They couldn't afford to waste numbers in wars of attrition, so instead they refined their tactics, continued to study, and came to rely on speed, mobile assault, and perfectly planned and timed attacks. But over time, this all came at a price, and pride and resentment came to pollute their nobility. The only measure of achievement is to measure oneself against others. When another legion was honoured, it was said that they took it both as a spur to do better and a wound to the Emperor's children's pride. When they failed to reach the quality of another, it created jealousy. When they did excel, it bred contempt for those they'd risen above. And no matter how high they rose, no matter how much they achieved, it was never enough. The achievements of the past were dead to them. Their hunger for perfection was without limit and could never be sated. The atrocities that had come later demonstrate this assessment, but the signs were there long before they fell. And fall they did. By the end of the crusade, the Emperor's children had rebuilt their forces and were deployed at Laran in a war of extermination against the Xenos Lair. However, their pursuit of perfection had already led portions of the Legion down a dark path, the diligence of their apothecaries occasionally turning to a desire to improve upon the Emperor's template, a practice that increased throughout the early stages of Horus's war against the war singers of Istvan. As the heresy became apparent, illicit modifications had been performed on a number of the Legion's command staff, and Fulgrim himself had become corrupted by a Laran demon blade. The Emperor's Children's fall to chaos started well before the rest of the heresy. So, at the start of the heresy, the Emperor's Children were estimated at around 110,000 legionnaires. But the opening battle on Istvan III, where the initial four traitor legions purged their ranks of loyalists, cost the legion greatly, maybe knocking them down to around 60,000? These were ordered extremely precisely according to the tenets of the Principia Bellicosa, with each legionnaire aware of exactly where he stood in the hierarchy of the legion. And while these clear lines of command were useful when executing the Third's famously precise and complex battle plans, they could also lock officers and troopers into their allotted roles, creating almost a noble class within the legion. Each squad was expected to excel in one specific area of warfare, and though the legion contained every sort of formation commonly used by the Astartes, some weapons and tactics were valued more highly than others. The Emperor's children valued speed and skill above all else, and so jet bikes and land speeders were common, as were command staff versed in logistics and planning. The specialisations expected of every squad led to some unique and feared units, such as the Sun Killers, Laz Cannon equipped heavy weapon squads, or the Palatine Blades that formed out of the Legion's tradition of honour duels. In fact, duelling was a huge deal for the Emperor's children, as was skill with a blade in general, and the taking of blades as trophies from defeated enemies was encouraged. As the heresy ground on, this rigid perfection started to fracture. The Emperor's children were one of the legions dug in at Istvan V, where the possessed Fulgrim killed his brother and friend, Ferus Manus of the Iron Hands. After this, the Emperor's children started to lose cohesion as their legionnaires gave in to their own desires. As the legion fell to Slanesh, its warriors turned into glory seekers, or fell to indiscriminate excess as part of cults like the Cacophony, the precursors to the Noise Marines. Some of the more organised parts of the Legion fought running battles against the White Scars, attempting to delay their journey to terror, but Fulgrim himself, even having conquered his possession, quit the Crusade for a while for a pilgrimage into the Eye of Terror, where he tricked his brother Perturabo of the Iron Warriors and used part of his life force to achieve apotheosis as a demon prince of Slanesh. By the time the Emperor's children arrived at the Siege of Terror, 
they were totally changed. A horde of cultists and noise marines that assaulted the palace with weight of numbers, heedless of casualties. But after Rogal Dawn defeated Fulgrim at the Satinine Wall, the Emperor's children quit the siege and rampaged through the civilian population, pursuing their own desires for excess before fleeing off-world and into the Eye of Terror. And that's the Third Legion. Their initial position as paragons of imperial might and their obsessive desire to prove themselves after the gene seed blight turned them into prideful, arrogant perfectionists willing to go to any lengths to improve, and this left them wide open to corruption by Slanesh. Their rigid lines of command and obedience to their betters made them easy to lead into that corruption, and in the end they were a pale shadow of the Old Legion, a carnival of cultists with no higher motive than their own excess. And that's how we know them in 40k. The Empress Children are an interesting legion to play in Heresy because they changed so much within the course of it. And you can pick any point in there for your army. Mine are most definitely from the very end of that story. Anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, so if you'd like more Horus Heresy info, then click on the box just there to the right, because the next Legion's probably about to load. And if you'd like to see any of these videos early or support the channel, then there's a Patreon link right below. See ya.